My name is Noe Mila. I am the Hungarian Doctoral Research Fellow at the Work Institute for Austrian and Central European Studies at the University of Alberta, and I will be your MC today. Please rise for the national anthems of Poland and Canada, sung by the Bologna Choir of Edmonton, followed by the Hungarian national anthem, sung and performed by Esther Krishna showing up for Calvary. Yes, 
to be deeper in your faith and life. We ask this through Christ, our Lord.
Mutual Coalition in Bulgaria. This presentation is titled Connections, the Roots of the Polish Hungarian Friendship. Poland, 
Marriages between the Polish and Hungarian nobility could now continue unabated. Stephen the first contemporary in Poland, Bolesław the Brave, or Bolesław Harobra, as he's known in Polish, married Ishvat's eldest daughter, and this would become the first of many dynastic marriages between the two nations. During the 11th century, the Germanic Holy Roman Empire sought to expand into the Carpathian Basin and Central Europe, posing a direct threat to the Hungarian and Polish states. At the time, Hungarian Prince Bela had been forced to flee to Krakow following a dynastic dispute with his brother Andrew, and ended up marrying Richeha, who was the daughter of Mieszko II, the king of Poland, who bore him several children. The two oldest sons of Prince Bela spent most of their lives growing up in Poland, but later would both become kings of Hungary. The first would become Giza I, while the second was known as Laszlo of Poland by the Hungarians, and would become a great chivalric saint of Hungary, being canonized in 1192. These Hungarian warrior kings would exemplify the Polish-Hungarian virtues with which they grew up in their characters and also in their ruling systems. These Hungarian Polish kings were eventually able to defeat the Germans to reestablish Hungarian supremacy in the Carpathian Basin. There are many other examples I can provide of these important dynastic marriages between Poles and Hungarians. Suffice it to say that this tradition continued for centuries and that these marriages were the basis of strengthening the power of these Central European countries as a bulwark to the growing threat of the Germans and the Russians. In the year 1335, for example, an agreement was reached between the Piast dynasty of Poland and the Anjou dynasty of Hungary at the well-known Hungarian fortress of Visegrad to establish a common diplomatic front and defensive system for the future security and prosperity of East Central Europe. This agreement was presided over by the Hungarian king Charles Robert, who chose as his wife Elizabeth, the daughter of the Polish king, one of the king. Hungary and Poland, in the centuries to come, would both fall prey to foreign conquest, and for long periods, lasting more than a century, lose their independence entirely. Regardless, the spirit of cooperation between the Poles and Hungarians engendered by the marriages and dynastic ties between these two peoples remained in popular consciousness and influenced the decisions of Poles. For example, to fight alongside the Hungarians in the fatal 1848 revolution against the Austrian Habsburgs. The most famous of these fighters is, of course, the Polish general Józef Ben, whose adjutant was none other than the Hungarian poet Sándor Petrovi, the Hungarian equivalent to Poland's Amnesiewicz. At this time, the idea of a union between Poland and Hungary was also ingrained in popular consciousness. And the father of the Hungarian Revolution of 1848, Lajos Kosciuk, had advocated the creation of a Hungarian, Polish, Croatian, Serbian, and Romanian federation that would prevent any attempts of Russian expansion into East Central Europe and that would directly inhibit any attempts by the Austrians to pursue divided rural strategies of pitting one Central European national group against another. Polish-Hungarian Friendship Day was officially declared on March 12, 2007 by the Hungarian government. It officially takes place on March 23rd each year, and it's a time when we people of Hungarian and Polish descent can celebrate a shared cultural heritage. However, there's one thing I would like to impress upon you from this presentation. It is that Polish-Hungarian friendship was a serious issue for the rulers of Poland and Hungary who felt it necessary to secure strategic alliances and bring those two peoples together for defense purposes. The warmth and kindness shared between the people in this room is not just that of common appreciation for good food and dancing, but perhaps reflects the yearning for independence shared between two Central European peoples who did not give up the fight for freedom. And in the modern day geopolitical context, with this emerging conflict between the United States and NATO, the powers of Russia. Polish and Hungarian friendship day should also serve as a reminder that we need not be beholden to any particular power block, and that there exists a culture and perspective unique to Central Europe that is worth you any for Thank you. Which means 
it was a long time ago, and it's going to be, it's, it's far in the future, so somebody's lost in space and time, I think. But it's about lost love.
has been a member of this orchestra for the past five years. He is also a member of the University of Alberta Symphony Orchestra, where he plays first violin and occasionally as a solo violinist. He won first place at last year's Kivanas Music Festival, and he also plays with the Super Ensemble at Edmonton. Today, he will play the best beat by Kreise, accompanied by the Tifra Ensemble at Edmonton.
strives to promote and preserve the fascinating dances, the traditional clothing, crafts, customs, and celebrations that form the diverse Hungarian cultural heritage. Today, members of Chadash are joined by members, members of Czechoslovakia, Czechia, all of whom are also members of the Hungarian folk dance, folk dance group in Winnipeg, to perform for you dances from the office. The Tsipra Ensemble will accompany Chadash for this number.
Humboldt was celebrating their 15th anniversary in January. Woolwich was formed with the folks to belong children, youth, and adults, a way to experience and maintain their Polish heritage and retain their cultural ties. The dancers are mostly of Polish descent and are attempting to learn or strengthen their Polish roots through dance, music, and stories while living in Canada's multicultural society. Woolwich will perform the Juliet Suite for today.
band members are professional musicians with a wide variety of backgrounds from orchestral, jazz, and folk, traditional Hungarian Roma styles. Sifra has struggled with both collecting and performing music, often collaborating with folk dancers and singers. They have been heard from coast to coast on CBC Radio 2, and their music has recently been archived by the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. For this next piece, Jim Cockle and Molly Matthew will play music from Kinesh.
exclusively in very members. Our dancers were always expected to sing folk songs on stage as they play such an integral part of our folk culture. I would often hear our Polish members forever struggle with the pronouncing of our S and Esh sounds as they are opposite in their mother tongue. And we would often joke about how they felt we used too many vowels and we felt that they didn't use enough. In order to fully experience what our friends have endured and persevered over the years in our Hungarian folk dance group, a few of our Hungarian-speaking dancers have learned to sing a song in Polish as a part of today's celebrations. I don't think we knew how hard it would actually be when we signed up for it. Please welcome Czerwona Zepa back to the stage with guests singing Wysoko Gorka. This song is dedicated to all the Polish dancers who have ever had to learn to sing in Hungarian.
thank Aniela Shani and his wife Patricia, please. Thank you. 